first of all, in this problem, we need to decide, should we be working on the left side or should we be working on the right side? Now, the next thing I also know is I want to, whatever side I pick, I know that, so when I'm looking at a problem like this, and again, I'm trying to give you guys my, my rationale of thinking. First thing I know is I know that cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, correct? Right? So I can, I don't really want to get too far. I want to try to keep, that, keep them within the same um, family, Ken. And as long as I can keep them working through there, that um, I just need to basically pick a side and go through. But I don't want to get crazy using trying to get them away from their two functions. I'm going to decide to work on the left side. And it doesn't really matter which side you pick, but you just got to pick a side. Now, the one thing I understand, at least the one thing that I know is if I multiply by 1 plus cosine squared, um, what that will do is that will give me, a, or if I multiply by 1 plus cosine of x, what that will do is that will give me a new trigonometric um, identity. So 1 plus cosine of x over 1 plus cosine of x. So the top, go ahead, the top gives you a um, perfect square trinomial, whereas the bottom is going to give you a secant squared of uh, secant of x plus 1, secant of x minus 1. So that's secant of x minus 1. I wrote this wrong. Correct? Hmm. All right, so let's go and try this. So therefore, this is going to multiply out, and this is going to give me 1 squared plus 2 cosine of x plus cosine squared of x all over 1 minus cosine squared of x. Hmm. And you know, when looking at this, I can, I can realize that, well, by doing this method, I mean, that looks pretty good, but the, the really the only problem I'm seeing with this is, I mean, 1 minus cosine squared of x is going to equal to what? Sine squared. And I could rewrite this as you know, sine squared minus 1, right? Or cosine of x equals 1 minus sine squared, correct? So if I look at that again, if I rewrite those, but why do I really want to go into sine? Because all I need to do is make it look like secants, right? So if I rewrite this as sine squared of x minus 1. So if I replace cosine squared of x with sine squared of x minus 1, and then I rewrite this as the sine squared of x, well, the 1's cancel out. Um, but I'm not really getting anywhere, am I? It's 1 minus. Yeah, it'd be 1 minus sine squared. You're right. What do you guys see by doing this? This has really not helped me out. Now, if my other side was equal to like something in sines or cosecants, then this would make sense, right? But my other side is not in terms of sines or cosecants, right? So converting from cosine to sine is not really doing me any justice. It's not helping me out. So guess what? My in initial thought and intuition is probably not going to, it's not like I did anything wrong, but it's probably not going to help me out. And yes, you can, it's OK to keep the, writing this down, because guess what? That's the process of solving these is just to try and erase. All right, so let's think about another thing. One of the things Mr. McLogan said is, you know, think about our operations. Is there anything else? I mean, I could obviously multiply by secant of x plus 1, but then that's going to do the same thing, because secant of x goes to tangent, right, using your Pythagorean identities. And I want to get it to look at the cosine. So the last thing, the last step, if stuck, write in terms of sines and cosines. So let's try that. Why don't I rewrite this in terms of um, cosine? So I'd write 1 over cosine of x plus 1 all over 1 over cosine of x minus 1. Oh, you know what I could do here? Ha, I know what I need to do. Never mind. This is even easier than that. Watch this. I finally just, it finally just dawned on me. So this is so much easier. I remember, I remember a problem like this. So this one's even easier. 
if you guys look at this, by doing that, I just realized I'm not going to get anywhere anyways. It's not going to help me out because, well, let me, let me show you. If I did 1 sine of cosine of x plus 1 all over 1 over cosine of x minus 1, what can I do here? I can what? Combine them, right? I mean, if I combine them, then I'm going to have single monomials, right? I'm going to have a, a function over function. That's not going to make it look like this, correct? So I'm spending this like five minute video here for an answer that's much easier. But I want, but I want you guys to think through my thinking. And this is OK. You tried all these things, right? You, you're like, I can't figure it out. Well, think about this, guys. Again, remember, as long as you multiply the same number or function in the numerator and the denominator, you're not changing something. Right? If I have 1 half and I multiply that by 4 over 4, that gives me 4 over 8. That is equivalent to 1 half, correct? So watch what happens. What would happen then if I just multiplied this by cosine of x on the top and the bottom? What would happen when I did that? Well, now I would have cosine of x times the secant of x plus 1 times the cosine of x all over secant of x times cosine of x minus 1 times cosine of x. <laughs> what? Cosine. <laughs> so, so by doing this, what's cosine times what's cos what's cosine of x times secant? What's cosine times secant? One. One plus cosine of x all over one minus cosine of x. You guys see how it's exactly the same? Yeah. Verified. Can I take a picture? Wait. It just comes with practice, I'm telling you.